I'm Lisa Nagel. I'm the chair of the North Texas Renewable Energy Group. That's, that's who we are. We are the uh, local chapter of the Texas Solar Energy Society, which is the regional chapter of the American Solar Energy Society. We're a uh, 501c3, um, so that means uh, we are a nonprofit. We're strictly a volunteer organization, and our mission is to educate people about uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency. And of course, we all like solar a whole lot, so we have a lot of solar eviction on us here. Um, I don't bouncing back a little bit here. The way we communicate with people in our group is we, our, our main communication going back and forth is a, a Yahoo group. So if you go to our website, which is www.ntreg.org, if you scroll down to the bottom of the home page, it gives you instructions for how to uh, become a member of the Yahoo group. That's a little bit old tech, but once you, you have to take the action to sign up and then um, you will get meeting notices there, but also it's a conversation group. You know, some of the kinds of conversations that have gone on recently have been about the hail damage from, uh, to roofs and to solar uh, from the recent storms, and people will pose questions and you get a lot of very informed answers. So that's a good place to have a, a, a conversation with people. The other thing that you're signing up for if you uh, leave your email address when you sign in today is our MailChimp newsletter, which also tells you about uh, the upcoming meetings and a little bit more information, but that's not something that you can talk back to. Um, so with that, we have a pretty packed, well, actually, I did want to say one thing. I'm not very good at this, but you know, with the events of the past few days, I just wanted to tell people, you know, keep in your thoughts the uh, the police officers in Dallas and elsewhere and um, some of the events of the past few days and also the families of the people that were killed in Minneapolis and Baton Rouge and Baltimore and other places. And, you know, as a group, we're very forward-looking, optimistic people. Uh, and, you know, anybody interested in solar, we have sort of the, the good of the earth in mind. So I think it's important for us to go together and fight to get past all this fear and violence that's been going on that we've been seeing recently. So I just want to say that quick thing. With that, I will hand it over to Amy. We have a few people who want to make some announcements, and then we'll start with our panel. Okay, and I'm Amy Shu. I'm one of the program directors, um, and Ringo Thomason is the other program director. Um, just wanted to, uh, just real quick, um, next month's meeting, um, which hasn't been posted on the website yet, um, but uh, it will be shortly. Chris, I, I don't know how many of you all have heard, but um, the city of Georgetown is going to go 100% uh, renewable. Um, Georgetown is a, I guess it's a suburb north of Austin essentially, and they are a municipally owned um, utility. And so Chris Foster, who is the, uh, his title I think is manager, resource manager or something like that, um, he's going to come up uh, and speak to us about that. So just wanted to give a little preview of next month's meeting. And, um, and so finally, yay, we're getting to the speakers. <laughs> um, so to my immediate left is Andrew Whitehead. He is the residential sales manager for Axiom Solar. He's a lead accredited professional and has an associate's degree in environmental technology from Santa Fe Community College in New Mexico. And then next to him is Graham uh, Waitskin. Uh, no S, sorry about that. Um, he is the uh, vice president of Treehouse, um, which is a, an eco-friendly, sustainable home improvement store that currently has a location in Austin, but they are coming to Dallas. Um, and I thought it was next year, but apparently it's gonna be the end of this year. Um, and so we are excited to hear about um, his presentation on the Tesla Powerwall. And then um, to, uh, at the end there is um, our own Jay Squires, <laughs> who many of you I'm sure uh, know, and he um, has, he did his own um, installation basically of batteries um, at his house. And so um, he's going to talk to us about that. Um, Couple ground rules. Unfortunately, Andrew has to leave by 11. So what we're going to do? <laughs> what we're going to do? He's going to speak, and then um, we will allow a handful of questions um, after after he speaks, and then um, Graham and then Jay are going to speak, and then we're going to hold off question, their questions to the end in the interest of time and getting through the presentation because I know this group is very inquisitive, and that's great. <laughs> um, so if you want to ask questions, um, including to Andrew, if you could line up actually in this middle aisle, okay, and you can ask two questions and then somebody it's going to be somebody else's turn you think i'm joking <laughs> um but yes you get asked two questions um and it'll be somebody else's turn 
and of course, um, their contact information should be on your presentations if you have further questions, okay? Okay, so let me turn it over to Andrew. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. One thing, Jay, can you hit the Excel on my, um, one thing, Okay, so before you ask uh, how much solar panels cost and power over new walls and all of that, um, every installer is going to ask you to do 12 months, um, basically give them 12 months of your energy usage. So do an Excel spreadsheet with the kilowatt hours that you use and the pricing and all of that. That's actually my own home um, and I am actually going, hopefully, getting the solar panels um, by the end of the month. So uh, yes, so do something like that and your installer will thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much. Would you be able to queue up the... Uh... Yes. Uh, Hi, everybody. Sorry I've got to leave early today. Um, my name's Andrew Whitehead. I head up the residential solar division at Axiom Solar. We are a Plano-based solar PV contractor. Um, been doing this since 2008. Um, back in April, we installed our first um, battery system at our office over on the east side of Plano. Um, really wanted to field test this technology that we were excited to bring to our customers, but you know wanted to see it in the real world performing as expected. So the battery system that we decided to go with is a German company called Sonen. Um, they've been doing this uh, battery storage system since 2009, so they've got a good tenure in the industry. And there are a couple of real highlights that jumped out at us in, in regarding this technology that, that really got us excited about it. So that's a picture of our Eco 12, a 12 kilowatt hour battery storage system that's installed at our office in Plano. We've got, a, we have uh, at this point upwards of 40 kW of solar on our rooftop, but we effectively broke off uh, 7 kW on a Fermi 7000 watt inverter, which you see to the left there, specifically devoted to the Sonin battery system. So um, this technology has a few major applications in our market, uh, first of which is self-consumption. Many of you probably already know what that means, but we generate 90% of our solar power during the day. Our heaviest demands are first thing in the morning and then later in the afternoon going into early evening. So allowing us to bank that surplus solar energy rather than export it to the grid and then use that solar energy at night after the sun goes down. So we really, we're, we're still exporting once the batteries are charged. I'll show you in a little bit our monitoring portal which illustrates that very clearly how much we're generating from our panels, how much is going to charge the batteries, how much is being sold back to the grid, and then how much we're consuming from the grid. Um, the other major application for the Sonin in our market is battery backup for grid-tied solar arrays. Uh, this is a straight grid-tied battery backup system. This is a great application because it's what's called AC coupled. AC coupled means this bad boy has an Outback Radian inverter already installed. That's a major component in the box. So that means this is compatible with literally any solar PV inverter on the market, period. So whether you have SMA, Enphase, Solar Edge, Fronius, Aurora, Power One, I mean, you name it, this guy is compatible with it. And that we saw as a real clear advantage since We've installed Enphase, Solar Edge, SMA, Fronius, you name it. So we wanted something that would really be uh, broadly compatible with, uh, with the marketplace. In other markets, Sonin's big markets in North America are California, Hawaii, New Jersey, New York. Markets that have big time of use charges and big discrepancies. That's a huge play for Sonin. That's where Sonin's really taking off in North America. But they are doing well here in Texas. You know, we've installed ours and we've got about four on order that will be installed later this summer and the early fall. And those are primarily folks that want that battery backup for their grid tied solar array. That's the primary application we're seeing here. In our office, we're really using it as a self-consumption model. Um, blah, 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 10,000 systems installed globally. The lion's share of that is Germany. Been in business since six years, proven technology. I'm gonna skip most of this high level stuff and talk about the technical specs since I think you guys probably want to hear some of that. Um, so what the Sonin is using is an Outback Radiant Inverter Charge Controller System. Uh, Sony is the manufacturer of the battery technology, and the battery technology is a little bit different. They're using what's called lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So it's not lithium ion, it's lithium iron phosphate. And the 
This was the other big advantage of the soda that jumped out at us, is it, these batteries are warranty for up to 10,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. A cycle, as you'll hear from these guys too, charge it to 100%, take it all the way back down, that's one cycle. So you do a cycle once a day, 10,000 cycles, puts us at about 26 to 27 years um, into the future. So its warranty is 10 years or 10,000 cycles, whichever comes first. 10 years is going to come first. Um, and that's to 100% depth of discharge, which is really important because all battery chemistries are, are not created the same. Um, lithium iron phosphate, the life PO, that's the stand in. It is, the, it is a safe battery chemistry. So if there are any chemical engineers in the, in the, in the audience, they can speak to that. But um, I've heard that firsthand from a, from a few people, not just the Sodom guys who were admittedly selling this to Axiom Solar. <laughs> Um, so this graph, that top line going uh, more horizontally across, is representing the sodium lithium iron phosphate batteries performance over 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 a life cycle of, of the 10,000 cycles versus everybody else. And they, for you know legal reasons, are not going to label the competitor's performance. But um, that's just a, a nice visual representation. Getting into the AC coupled part again, this is what's so exciting to us. Um, so the outback radian inverter charge controller that's, that's inside this bad boy comes in two iterations. There's a 4,000 watt version, there's an 8,000 watt version. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead a couple of slides. I'll go back to these because these are important. But going left to right uh, represents the, the options you have with the Sonin system. So four kilowatt hours at the left, that's the smallest iteration. That version has a 4,000 watt outback radian installed inside and two lithium iron phosphate battery units, each of which holds two kilowatt hours of storage. So it all, it's always, you see, modular in two kilowatt hour increments. As you'll notice, we've got four kilowatts worth of output, nominal output power to the left, and then it jumps to seven and eight kilowatts going to the right. The amperage is different depending on the outback, not necessarily the batteries. Um, and then the overcurrent protection needed is effectively 30 amps for the smaller units, 50 amps for the larger units. We, um, when we took our inventory in stock, we just went with the 8,000 watt outback radians because um, we thought that was where most of the demand was going to be coming from, and that's what we've seen so far. But it is it is available in smaller versions. If someone just wants a four four kilowatt hours worth of storage. That's something you can achieve here. Most of our customers so far are expressing interest more in the 12 to 16 kilowatt hour range, just because if you have a 10 kilowatt solar array and you're generating you know, 40 kilowatt hours a day, and you want to keep as much of that as possible rather than export anything to the grid, you're going to need more than four or six kilowatt hours of storage. But that's where it all comes down to when you look at your system performance on a day-by-day -day basis and help you make a recommendation. So backing up to, oh, I went forward, sorry. Um, so this is, these, these illustrate really how we would typically install one of these units. So the grid is up, it's supplying our main breaker panel. Everything is connected to the grid side or line side of the Sonin. So we have that sub panel, that's your protected load panel. That's what we're putting those emergency, your lights, refrigeration, anything else you deem critical, all on the grid side of the, in, of, of the Sonin. And the PV is back feeding the sub panel, which is then back feeding the grid side of the Sonin. There's an integrated automatic transfer switch. So what happens when the grid goes down, the Sonin creates its own microgrid. So the language they use is this unit is grid forming. So the grid goes down. The Sonin, as illustrated here, everything switches to the load side. That's the automatic transfer switch doing its job. So then the PV is back feeding the sub panel and the Sonin is putting out AC power at 240 volts, so your solar inverter still thinks it has the grid. So you've got a solar inverter, and you're probably familiar with the fact that when the utility is out, anti-islanding wants that inverter to go offline within a few milliseconds, and you have no power. The out, it's the outback radian inside this Sonin system that is effectively, for lack of a better word, tricking your solar inverter into thinking it has the grid, making a, your, your own, a microgrid inside your home. 
between the Sonin, your protected load panel, and your solar array on the roof. And that's what's so exciting about this technology. I think that is, because our market doesn't have time of use charges, we generally pay the same price for our energy regardless of time of day, having that battery backup and having that ability to get the benefit of your solar array while the sun is shining and having enough stored energy to carry you through the night is a huge application in our market. Um, these are just some illustrations of different ways you can you, you can integrate this into into the system. I'm going to really try to plow through this because I know we don't. There's a lot to get through, and I don't want to um, hog an unfair share of the market. The system monitoring is great. Um, if um, Jay, if you wouldn't mind opening up, is it Chrome, Amy? Uh, Safari. Is yeah. it Safari? Yeah. There you go. And then, um, and then there's a tab. There's that that, that, that one's on the battery. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here and go off mic for a sec. Um, so this is this is our office in the city in, in over in East Plano. And anyone who wants to come and see this guy firsthand, you are very much invited to do so. That's one of the reasons we installed it. Just let us know, and, and we'll be happy to have you come by and check it out. So this is looking at today, and somehow I logged into the German version of this portal <laughs> at our office. It's the monitor is it's all in English, um, but it's. It's not too hard to wrap your mind around, so I'm going to shut off some of these fields and we'll just look at the PV. So, so that's our that's our PV curve. You know, that's our that's our production curve. And again, this is a 7,000 watt Fermius inverter going into what is 12 kilowatt hours worth of storage. So uh, we have our nice bell curve of system performance. When we look at our charging. You can see that we are fully charged, depending on the day, by sometime in the mid-afternoon. On a nice sunny day, our batteries are usually fully charged by about 2 to 3 p.m., and then the charging just stops, and that's when we start exporting to the grid. So we don't export anything to the grid all morning long. The solar goes to supply our consumption, and let's turn consumption on, which I think is Verbrock. Yeah, Verbrock. <laughs> Verbrock. Anybody speaks German, help me out. So Verbrock is our consumption. So the solar is going 100% to meet our demands and to charge the batteries until about 2 or 3 p.m. when we actually start overproducing beyond, the batteries are not charged, and we just start selling to the grid. Now, Erzegern, um, I can do better than that, I'm sorry, um, Erzegern, no, that was wrong. Um, it's uh, Enthodon. 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 Enthodon is, thank you, is discharge. So you can see when that when when we, when we hit about what would that be 2100 7 8 p.m. when the solar goes to bed the battery system is programmed to kick in so that's when the batteries start to discharge and the batteries will also discharge during the day if there's ever a deficit so before we buy anything from the grid the batteries will fully discharge and the way it's going right now is with our 12 kilowatt hours of storage it's getting us to between five and six in the morning before we start buying. So we just got to go ahead from the leadership to install four more kilowatt hours of storage and that should be enough to get us 100% of the way there so that we're not, we're not buying anything overnight. Um, and we're not a house, we're an office, we're not a secret nightclub, so our loads are not excessive overnight the way you would see in your house. Um, so a lot of times what we're doing for our, 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 our clients that are really interested in this technology, many of you are probably familiar with the curb, home energy monitoring device or the e-gauge, we're going ahead, we're installing a curb or an e-gauge in your uh, panel so we can really see your circuits, what they're using, when they're using it, so we can make sure that before you make the decision to go with the Sonin, you are really comfortable with and your expectations are realistic about what you'll be powering and how long you'll be able to power that for. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call it there because I know um, we've got a lot to get to. Um, but thank you guys so much again. Um, my info. Oh, the, the, there's a there's a pretty broad range of cost for the Sony, um, from the four kilowatt hour to the 16 kilowatt hour turnkey install. We're talking about generally 12 to 27 thousand dollar price range. All in. So it's a different stratosphere of investment. But this is where that 10,000 cycles to 100% depth of discharge really matters. Because if you're talking about a system that you want to have these batteries go the distance for a few decades, 
we feel this is a great way to go. And as long as you do this in conjunction with solar to some extent, our, you know, our own accounts department has verified that there's no reason you cannot take the 30% federal investment tax credit on your storage system. If you just did storage, I don't think the IRS is going to be too happy with you if you try to take that 30%. But if you do this in conjunction with the solar project, then you know, we, we are not accountants, but we have it on pretty solid authority that the 30% tax credit could apply. But thank you guys very much. Um, yeah. Let me know if you have any. Take questions if anyone wants to line up, um, and I'll give you the microphone. Pass the microphone to you. There's really no questions. Uh, what's the percentage <laughs> efficiency for charge and discharge? Um, I, you know, I apologize. I'd have to go to the spec sheet. But like the, the is it? Yeah, I mean the the, the the round trip. I think we're north of ninety percent, but I don't have that in my head. Why is the discharge so constant overnight? Oh, um, well, we don't have a lot. So we, we installed a, a, we have a 200 amp panel that basically powers the refrigerator, the hot water heater, our phantom loads, and all of our offices. So it's not a lot. I mean, we, we leave at 5 p.m. We open at 7 a.m. So there's not a tremendous amount of variability. So there are little demand. spikes, but that ramp looks really smooth. Yeah, and the, and the little spikes uh, are, are, are the, uh, the hot water heater. Yeah. I'm impressed. I, I've got a lithium ion phosphate system in my camper. It has two to four thousand uh, uh, cycles built into it, and a, and a deep discharge is at twenty percent. Can you and at fourteen point two volts, I believe. Can you tell me about the lithium ion uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, or batteries? Well, specifically, <coughs> I'm not a chemical engineering guy, um, but the 10,000 cycles is, is what they're warranted for. <coughs> Excuse me. I have it from our folks at Sony that the 100% depth of discharge is achievable because of the nominal rating of the DC batteries is slightly above that what, that, that nameplate. So if it's a if it's 10 kilowatt hours worth of storage and we're saying you can get 10 kilowatt hours out of these batteries, it's because each of those battery units is rated at is is truly point. 1% more, um, but it's 100% depth of discharge to the nameplate rating of the battery. So is your system discharging all the way to zero and then charging all the way, all the way back up? Every single day? Every single day. Okay, so you don't yeah. set parameters? Between no, it's, uh, it's going all the way down, and that's where you see our discharge stop okay. at 5 to 6 a.m. That's batteries are done. Do you have the technology to set parameters? Oh yeah, okay. yeah, it's very programmable. and. We haven't seen this really work yet, but so we had them at our office and we've tried them out. We're not, we don't love them 100%, but they do have smart meter sockets that we can plug in. We plug them in all over our office. So the, you know, what, what we're hoping they'll get a little better about is smoothing out the technology for the programmability so that you can then, you can load shift. You know, you can, char you can have stuff turn on and off programmed by the Sonin throughout the day. To you know, either peak shave or low shift, so you're using more of the energy when you need it. It's really designed to be a whole house energy management system. We've not been super impressed by where that aspect of the technology stands right now. But in terms of the battery component, in terms of the self-consumption modeling of it, as well as the battery backup, it's working beautifully. One more question. Yeah. Is, it, is, is it stored uh, is it stored DC or AC? Because like you go into my garage and I've got all these inverters flipping stuff back and forth. So it's like it's pulsing. It's just kind of getting comical. How many you know, inverted your car takes this? Your batteries you know? are DC. The batteries are storing DC. I mean that is just that is what batteries are going to store. Regardless of the really you where you can directly feed that into your DC car. Um, that's a that's, that's a great. Why my car is like reverse. So it comes back out of my inverter over here, and then back in my car, my car is breathing over here because it's reversing it again. I'm going to let Jay feel that one, because I, <laughs> I am not qualified to answer that question. It's very inefficient. Your car wants 600 volts DC. This thing's going to have a 48 volt battery. Could you stand up, please? Say that again. A Prius? 
No, this is just a, a Ford. Okay, but they're 600 volt batteries. Okay. That's the standard AC charging, and State Street charging on an electric car is 600 volts. And the Radiant will want 48 volts, so the battery bank in SL is going to be 48 volts. So they're, just, they're trying to communicate properly to get it right? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just the cost of doing business. It's just yeah, some just things. We're not. There's some stuff going on in storage at an industrial level and large commercial area or at a level that I'm not. I can't really talk about. Um, it'll be higher voltage and would be good for charging electric vehicles. But really, the best we've got going on now is stage two because most of the stage three chargers for cars are. Just because they're trying to fill up a battery in a car that normally takes overnight to fill in 15 to 30 minutes. And so there's just, there's a lot going on. Superchargers? Well, yeah. I mean, like the Tesla supercharger. I mean, that's their stage three charging. But those are. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for your time. And then, yes, you have blessed that car just turned one year old. So, right. Where else can come visit uh, oh, is it axiomsolar.com? It's, it's, it's axiomsolar.com. Okay. Um, www.axiomsolar.com. Yeah, okay. all right. We're just over on the east side of Plano. Okay, so axiomsolar. Okay.